Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, are we dogs in your eyes? Do we amount to nothing but street dogs who should be fed even before we who beg with our great heart to have you intervene in our lives and repair us and prepare us? Thank you, Lord, for the ways in which you come to us in unexpected ways, but more importantly, in a way that demonstrates to us how much you love us. And so now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Janelle and Michael Gruby came, mentioned a DVD and gave it to us to watch. And I would recommend that all of you watch it. It's a wonderful movie. It's called I Still Believe. It's actually the story about uh, Jeremy, uh, um, it went through my head, the story about uh, Jeremy Camp, who was a singer. And Jeremy Camp and fell madly in love with a girl the f freshman year of his co college, and not long after that got married. Jeremy Camp was a, somebody who's been recognized as a singer. How many of you have heard Jeremy Camp before? Some hands back there, some hands over there. This movie is a movie that you shouldn't miss. But let me tell you why. The movie actually tells us not so much about you and me, but it also reflects where you and I stand in relationship to our Lord. You see, the movie, I still, I still believe, is of such great significance to me and to Karen and, and maybe to most of you, is of great significance because it deals with the issue of what happens when our prayers don't get answered. All of us have had occasions when we have prayed and prayed and prayed, fallen on our knees, did everything that we possibly could, but nothing happened. And here in this particular movie, we find, for example, that Jeremy and Melissa, they got excitingly married, and four months later, she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and not long after that, died. You see, they prayed and prayed and prayed. But the, what makes the point interesting is that the father of Jeremy, who was a pastor, got together with him not out of any strength that he had, but out of his own weakness and out of his own failure to grow the kind of church that he wanted. And on each occasion when they mentioned something, the father said, yes, but I still believe. Yes, but I still believe. Can you say that? Can you say that about your prayer life, that even though you might be encountering great difficulties, that you nevertheless believe? One of the easiest things to do is to give up. When I first came here, not long after I first came here, I met with a woman and her children, and I won't go into the details, but she told us, or she told me, that in this particular situation, if God did not do what she needed and wanted, she would never follow him. I've had those thoughts. I've been angry at God. Why have you not taken the very burden off which you could so easily do? I mean, can you imagine why would God not lift the burden off of your back if he's capable of doing so? Tim Keller says that's because God knows something that we don't know. And if we knew, if we knew what God knows, then we would also want what God has done for us. You see, we come now to the point about you and me. What does that have to do with this text? What does I still believe have to do with this text? Let me read portions of it again, the Syrophoenician woman. 
And she comes up to Jesus and she says, my, what, my daughter is possessed with an evil spirit. Would you heal her? And Jesus says, you dogs, I'm not going to waste my time on you. I've come to the children of Israel. I haven't come to you. I haven't made myself available to you. In fact, you better stand in line because you're a long way down the line being the kind of Syrophoenician woman that you are. And she, what does she say? She said, wait a second, Lord. She said, you may be correct in telling me that I do not deserve to have me come to you. And then the, Lord, the woman goes on to say, yes, Lord, but I still believe. In fact, she tells the Lord, look, it isn't enough for us to just talk here. I know that even the crumbs of the table are given to the dogs that are there. And so it is with us. You see, you and I have the option every time something happens that doesn't fit our view of the world, we have the option of cursing God or actually asking him to give us what he wants us to have. And that's not always easy. In fact, that is the kind of text that we need to grapple with again and again because look, what, what if you didn't, weren't able to have a scholarship? Would you still be able to see to God, I still believe? What if there were an incredible storm that flooded the entire East Coast? Would you, if you lived there, still say, I believe? What if we had tornadoes and hurricanes in the South? What if we had hurricane or the effect of hurricanes and tornadoes here in Sulphur Springs? Or in your own life? What if in your own life you had a illness or a disease or a sickness? Would you still say, yes, I believe? Because that's the invitation that Jesus gives to each one of us. Yes, we might insist on our own way, but the reality is that God's way is always better, even if we don't recognize it. Amen. <laughs>